Welcome. Hello. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm super excited to be here today and to be able to have this crew come together. And it's all about human connection in the coordination. And we talk a lot about mycelium networks and all the ways that, you know, we're decentralized and coordinating. But it comes down to that we're actually finding each other. Like, as human beings, everything that we do beyond that stems from the place of our why and stems from like what it is that we align with other human beings on. So when we are only concerned with the technical aspects of things and not why we're doing them, I think that we miss the mark. We have the danger of a technology creating patterns and creating a world that we're actually trying to evolve from <laughs> if we do that unconsciously. And I think that it's the accountability of co-creators and allyship and just a beautiful network of humans that believe in things that you also believe in and, and an alignment towards that North Star together that really is what's going to shape Web3 in being something that disrupts and evolves us. So <laughs> that's what I feel. My name is Amber Bradner. Um, I work with Camp Social. And you can follow any of the QR codes. I made it super simple for slides. That people love QR codes. Uh, so I work with Camp Social. And I've been in this space for a bit now. Um, super excited to be in Camp Social because it's all around us finding each other and self-organizing as individuals and communities. And we just launched a 10K campaign that's going directly back to the individuals and communities that are self-organizing here at East Denver and Dow Denver. So I invite you all, the next slide that will go up will go directly to that at the end of this presentation. There is a link in my uh, QR as well. That's my background. A lot of other stuff, you're welcome to read that online. But let me go through just who is up here. So Gary Shang, good friend here who I met who had founded DreamDAO and Civics Unplugged and is just, someone who I spent two hours on my first phone call with thinking I wasn't going to talk to anybody that day and just dropped in deep and um, currently with Gitcoin and has a Level Up America and Homefront and is just doing so much around the language, the story and like how we actually come together and the dangers of the things that we're not noticing as well. Um, we have Rachel from Opolis, who's super passionate about DAOs and the decentralized workforce and empowering people with benefits. Got Gloria up here from Supermodular, previously Gitcoin, and is just like an amazing human being with a kind heart that is a super organizer who's doing all the work for Shelling Point coming up and, um, and a mother. Mom. And a mom, and a, builder, a mom, first. and a builder, yeah. and and has been in this space for quite a while. Yeah, five years. Five years, and Russell Ballard, yeah. one of the stewards of a, a forty-acre DAO and a chief vibe officer, <laughs> proof of vibes. So every time that anything feels real good, I send him a picture, and he's like, "Yeah, the vibes are on." So he'll be your vibe validator, <laughs> and he's working to help bring more people of color and more diversity into the Web three space and doing that in a very actual way around the planet. So, so, so thank you all for being here. And I would like to start with just an, an open question for you all of what is it for you that has been the golden thread in your life in this space in Web3? Like what's kept you in this? And how have you found your people? How have you found the, the spaces and what does that space of belonging even mean for you? Um, I'd love to just hear like a little bit of your journeys for whoever would like to share their introduction into the space and how they find themselves now deeply rooted in this. Yeah. So like I, I, I'm a little older than the most people are in this space, but I always say like the roots of me even coming to this space actually comes from like Rage Against the Machine, Sleep Now in the Fire. That was like my favorite oh my video God. when I was 14. <laughs> Wait, I was just talking about Rage Against yeah. the Machine. Like I, that's... Anyways. Well, anyway, so if you know Sleep Now in the Fire, it's all about like dis using like rock and roll to disrupt the stock market. And so we start about like economic disruption, disruption, like that is a core value of mine. But I think of it as like 
being like the black woman, like his, marginally, historically, like I'm like the least accessible to funds, tra like trajectory wise. And like, um, I was always about economic empowerment. I had worked at Square before and I worked on dealing with the hackathon team of going to hackathons, empowering builders, doing things of that nature. And then I uh, had a lovely surprise baby, so I was on maternity leave. And when I was on maternity leave, um, this will get you into my brain for a little bit, I decided that to pass the time, I'd watch the core Ethereum developer call and take notes. And so that's what I did every day. <laughs> and I got to know the core developer team and like really figure out like what this Ethereum was and like join some hackathons and like earn crypto that way. And I just kept joining these hackathons and build it on my hackathon background. And there was a, a an opportunity to join Kevin Owaki at GetCoin and to help run their hackathon parts from a builder's perspective and really empower builders and tell people like what they need in order to help developers. And so uh, I joined then, and at that time I was employee number like eight. We were just spinning out of consensus. We were just launching a token. We were just uh, launching a DAO. So it's like all of this stuff. And I am the builder focus of like, I can build like stuff on crypto, but like all this DAO stuff that people were talking about, was like all over my head. And so I kind of had to learn at the same time that we were all building. And I was like, okay, this is awesome. Um, these whole secondary like systems that we can now use to build on and empower people that don't want to play in the traditional games or weren't being like rewarded in a traditional like way from banking or whatever, now have a secondary way to play. And that was like extremely powerful for me as a, like a woman and a minority to sit there and be like, there's this, you don't have to play into the current system that you're being penalized from. You can play into another thing. And I was like, okay, yes, let's build this system and empower people in this way. And I was all about the builders who were building those systems, either the, to the DAO tools, the um, ecosystems, anything, the education, like boosting that up and making it as thriving as possible. And so that's been my mission ever since I've been into the space is really like, how can we empower builders? How can we get more people? How can more people understand it in a way, either in their language or in a way that uh, they understand it as well? So like, if I have to have a hackathon, it has to be like in Korean, which we've done, or in Chinese, which we've done, or even in Spanish, which we've done. I will always host it and always set it up so that people are empowered, but it will happen the way that they need to have their knowledge. So it's really important to me. Can I just point out that Gloria knows like 50 languages? I know five. <laughs> <laughs> but, but like just Gloria's talent and commitment for um, empowering all kinds of people is just like unrivaled, really. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. But that's how I got in the space. Yeah. I guess I could follow up uh, for me getting into the space. I remember pandemic, you know, trying to find something to do. And I fell into a YouTube rabbit hole. And I was watching this podcast and I heard Mark Cuban talk about like DeFi, believe it or not. And he's like, if I can go back and learn anything, like I will go look to DeFi and I Googled it. And then I realized there's a whole economic system being built right underneath our noses that most people don't know about. And then I just, you know, just really OD'd and become obsessed with it. And then launched a 40 Acres DAO because I seen that there was a space for it that, you know, people of color needed a space where we feel comfortable and can communicate with one another in a way that we understand, right? In our vernacular and things and colloquialisms or whatnot. And so from there, I realized that building really is the vibe. And like just to, one of the things I kind of live by is your vibe attracts your tribe. So the person you are, naturally, you gravitate to people who are like you in different sub communities. And so then launched a proof of vibes protocol and then just continue to come to events and connect with like-minded individuals. So that's that's been the you know major plus for me. Anytime I come to these, being able to talk to other people that understand the language, right? And not feel weirded out talking about liquidity or smart contracts and all these other nuances that my everyday friends would just look at me like I'm speaking an alien language. Awesome. Well, I, I just want to start with immense gratitude for everyone I'm on stage here with right now. Like. These are some really brilliant folks. Please connect with them after. Uh, your IQ will go up every time you talk to these humans, I promise. Um, for me, my why, what my roots are. This is a really loaded question for me. Uh, but I would say also during the pandemic, I had a very introspective period of really trying to hone in on my identity and what I will do to contribute to a better world. And I discovered something called Ikigai. Now this is finding, it's the Japanese philosophy for finding your life's purpose. And I found this Venn diagram and your life's purpose intersects in between what you love, what you can get paid for, what the world needs, and what you're good at. 
So I thought about this long and hard, and it's actually changed for me, weirdly. It's been a pretty fluid process for me. Um, I made the decision to start my own business when the pandemic started, and I decided to make a business that focused on regenerative practices. So that is giving back to people and giving back to the planet. So I started a juice company where I would help people do cleansing. Um, I'd give them cleansing packages. Um, I use zero plastic in my, my products. I believe in doing good things for the earth and using uh, recycled materials, uh, glass, and things like that. And what I would do is use some of these proceeds to help with nonprofit organizations, doing ocean cleanups. And I always just felt the vibe of like wanting to give back to our planet and wanting to sustain during our time here. Um, then I discovered DAOs in Web3. I met with people like Gary. I met with people like Amber. We had like, I, I think also like a two hour phone call one day uh, that almost didn't happen, but I'm so glad that it did. Uh, Gary invited me into this group. It's like Alchemist, Alchemist DAO. Yeah. And oh my God, just so many amazing people in there. We were talking about Kiss the Ground, that documentary about like regenerating the soil. Um, and we just had so many things in common. So. At the end of the day, I feel like the, the real answer for my why is, is human coordination, human connection. Um, I don't have a technical background, but I like to problem solve and bring people together that can solve these pressing problems that our world is facing, like hierarchical organizational structures, extracting value from individuals. That's a big reason why I love Opolis and why I'm so rooted in this mission of self-sovereignty and democratizing employment. Um, I believe that we should tap into each human's potential, right, and uplift them. Um, and do good things for our world. I'm gonna be talking about regenerative employment at uh, Shelling Point. So um, yeah, I think regenerating the world and offering a path for humans to uh, follow their higher path. That is my why. <laughs> yeah, well I- Gary's uh, like, I'm just here to hype everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, hmm. Well, I think why it's helpful to not just talk about like technology, but also others, What like what else is there? and um, I guess a big part of what drew me to Web3 was coming to ETH Denver last year. It was like an unreal experience where um, I, I met people like Gloria. I met, I don't, I don't know, where did we meet? I don't know, maybe it was, maybe it was later. But like, um, and, and this is, this is a, a, a non-advertisement for, or an advertisement for Shelling Point, which is what truly blew my mind, which Gloria organized um, with, with some others that brought together all these people that were just super idealistic about what, um, what the future could be. And it's, but it's like optimist, idealist, realist at the same time, right? It's like this really interesting combination of people that have lots of belief that we can do so much better as humanity, but and then they're actually like building shit. And that's like, I did not know like that there was even a, a gathering point for people like that. I mean, I just, I, I've been so, the default is just to be surrounded by people that think that the, like everyone knows that the game that we're invited to play or not invited, compulsorily forced to play um, is not working. But the question is who's gonna build uh, another game or, or or a meta game that enables anyone to create the game that they want, right? And that's really what it, it didn't like, the realization about the power of Web3 didn't come to me like overnight. Like I'm still kind of realizing new things about all the potential, but it's, you can sort of see Web3 as like a game engine uh, for us to build whatever game we want. Um, and just however civilization, thank you for the nods, very validating. <laughs> and uh, I think, um, I guess one final thought is, you know, you, you can have all these brilliant technologists and if there's not people that are articulating what a different game could look like that they should reverse engineer um, toward, um, you just have a bunch of, uh, I guess the, the worst case scenario is that you have a bunch of brilliant um, coder people that are like just mercenaries that don't that are just going to be hired by whoever to just entrench hyper capitalism um, around the world. Right? And I'm not against money. Like I think people should be super well compensated for d creating tons of value um, in the world. But like we are all losing mm -hmm. based on the current game that we're playing right now. Well, I mean, what Gary just talked about is like when you start to think of like historically in open source, you have all these contributors that like have other jobs, but have like this 
thing that they created that they know would make impact and they're like wow this would make impact here in my own community i'm going to release that to the world but like maintaining open source is so difficult to do because they have to do their real job that they get paid for but they're not going to get paid for this other thing that had huge impact and so when you start to see like are we trying to create a society that like you have to get paid to do work or you get paid to do impact like that's the thing that we have to really start to look at and how do we measure success do we measure success with impact or do we measure success with Mm -hmm. like roi only in dollars you know and so like once we start to look at that from that type of level like you can kind of remove people and say like no their work does have impact beyond just like dollar for dollar impact they have impact from like making things thrive a little bit better and like the thing that's absolutely mind-blowing in my mind it's like so many of our fortune 500 companies rely on code that is comes from open source yeah, contributions. Yeah, I was just going to say, it's a conversation them. that's so alive yeah. for me with a friend right now where he's like, do we even realize the risk of what will happen when these massive communities and consumer communities are leveraged with Web3 Tech yeah. through a brand and basically able to gamify and manipulate behavior and things like that, but also misses the mark. Yeah. Like the whole idea behind at least I believe why many of us are here is to build something new in a different way where value is actually distributed more equitably. And so I think there is a a risk. There's those unintended consequences of, you know, we are still here. We are still in a society that operates in a value system that maybe many of us don't align with. So we're in a dance. We're in a time between narratives we're literally creating that time, right? We're creating what is next. We're in the emergence of the next epoch, whatever you want to call it. And so I think one of my questions I'd like to ask around this is, what is the gap? Like, what is it that we need to be paying attention to? I know what I see, which is around this, like, how are we actually telling a story, finding that point that we're all moving towards together? Because when we're building alone and we're not coordinating around that mission of like that visualization of what we're actually going to create together, I think that we are fragmented. We lose the strength of us as a collective and we become vulnerable for Really, I mean, like you're saying, just people to be outsourced, to be plucked from and be like, hey, we're going to pay you this much money, so just do this thing here. Um, so we have we have to stand very firm in that, but we also have to have structure around us and sustainability. And so I'm really curious for each of you, if you look at, when you think about human connection in the coordination through that lens, what is it that you think is an actionable step to address a gap that is in our path right now towards the coordination movement that we see? I definitely think the first thing that comes to mind is the communication aspect. Like all of these overly convoluted terms that gatekeep, you know, like liquidity pools, staking, yield farming, that shit go over the everyday person's head. And it really creates a barrier for the people who want, who need it the most. And so breaking down these, these, these deep concepts in simple ways, like information aggregation is what I like to call it. And so like, if we can just simplify them and make them simple so that, you know, a fifth grader, if we just chat GPT it and like ask it to explain it to a fifth grader, I think it would be in great graces. Like, cause at the end of the day, that's what's really scaring people off from the technology is like these, they, they, they disassociate it with them. And so they need, I think, two things, relatability and relativity. They need people close to them, sharing it with them, and that look like them or that they can relate to so that they can really digest the information. I'm gonna check you on this. The concept itself is really not that deep. There's a lot of communities that have the concepts in a different term or different like text. So it's like, if you can speak a language, and their language and let people know the lang- their language and like hear back their concepts to it. Because like a liquidity pool, it's the same thing as, as like a, I think it's called like a susu. Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. And where it's just like, there's a lot of these communities that have these concepts that have been like already excluded from money for a long time and they've created these other concepts and they're like, oh, you're just talking about this. And so being able to sit there and break it down at a like conceptual level mm-hmm. is really important. But the other side of it is like, we really need to like spend listen with two ears and have one mouth where you have to listen to other communities and let them be able to like 
talk back to it. So I always say like, you know, we have all these conferences, we have all these talks that are always in like English. If we had it in another language and really let people be empowered to learn within their language, then they can bring the technology from their perspective and see like how it can be used and how it could be. Used. So I think there's that side so of it. Like a couple minutes yeah. minutes. Okay. So something I want to comment on, I love what Russ was saying. Um, I think a couple things that we need moving forward, right? Better coordination, better communication, simplification, and building bridges to onboard new people from the Web 2 world. And not even just Web 2, people who aren't familiar with Web 3 or DAOs. We need to simplify things. Actually, one of my friends in this room has told me um, the marketing for Apple, right? It's so dumbed down that it's genius. It, it's like a universal language that everyone can speak. It's something that's attractive that everyone can understand. I think in Web3 and in DAOs, we have all this vernacular that can be a bit off-putting and intimidating to someone who's not familiarized. Mm -hmm. So communication, simplification, and collaboration, I think those are the three main things that we need. And another thing that came to mind when Amber was speaking too was learning from our failures. Like a lot of projects, unfortunately, you know, now in the bear market, we're seeing a lot of projects that have dried up who haven't done proper treasury management, risk assessment, or even better yet, um, providing utility or solving a problem. I think we need to create more projects that we actually need that will provide a utility, that will help us progress in this space, and we need to simplify these things, have better communication and better coordination. I honestly think you guys are gonna be like shocked in five years because my kids who are five and 13, they already know coordination mechanisms. They already have literally like understanding different types of currencies because all of their video games, they're already playing with people all across the world and whatnot. So there's like a knowledge gap maybe with people like let's say 15 on, but you're gonna have a huge wave of people that already understand like the core mechanisms of it and are gonna sit there and be like, should I go to college or should I just join a DAO? You know, and be like, just join the DAO. Like my 13 year old knows he's in a DAO he gets paid from a DAO. He has the whole thing where it's all like, it creates problems at home. But other than that, like, you know, that's it's cool. that, that's, yeah. that is amazing. Um, I, yeah, I think like a, a theme here is that um, we need we need people to play a new game, whether yeah. that's and it's not a, it's not a new monolith. It's like uh, the, the game is a meta game where you are actually you have the freedom to build the future in the way that you, you actually want. And, um, but we need to basically, there's a lot of missing like game engine pieces that enable, that democratize the ability to create new games and play new games, right? So just to kind of shout out Opolis um, as like a really core piece of this game engine is that like, and I guess I'm not like an official master, but I kind of just like, I, I <laughs> I use it. I wouldn't. I don't think I would be able to be in Web three in like a legal way without Opolis. Um, but it, it allows um, someone like me who wants to contribute to multiple awesome public goods, basically, to be able to do that. Versus like being like basically trapped in like a company and like l like legally disincentivized to help other companies that are doing cool stuff. Right. Yeah. That's a very old world way, old game way of playing. And so. I just commend Opolis, I commend 40 Acres DAO, I commend Supermodular, I commend Gitcoin for yeah, building yeah. these tools that are not like forcing you into a particular game, new games. Oh, our new, our, our, our new prison is better than your old prison. <laughs> oh, oh and obviously Camp Social. Camp Social. <laughs> it was yeah, yeah. so obvious Next that slide, I had to by say the way, it. if you can, in the back. Uh, okay, we have to, sorry, to cut you off, but they've told us several times that we have to stop. So if we can put that other slide up, that would be sick. Um, Y'all are invited to uh, this 10K uh, to earn it as a individual or a collective community. Um, but I invite you all to take part in that because you're already self-organizing here. And thank you all so much for listening. Thank, thank you, you so much for the panel. Um, appreciate all of you and look forward to meeting you. Thanks, everybody.